Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease, Islam is love and prosperity, Islam is not hatred or adversity, Islam is neither maze nor grace, Islam is giving Allah praise, Islam is keeping up the pace, Islam is forever. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, and welcome to this episode of The Beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we want to continue talking about one of the beauties of Islam, and that is the way to get to Almighty God. Now, many people talk to us about worship. They talk to us about their particular faith, and they will tell us that in our worship, we do this or we do that. And at the same time, I would wonder Exactly what is it that Allah would accept, Almighty God? What does He accept? What does He consider to be worship? Well, we're going to find that out in this episode because we're going to talk about a word called deen. Deen. What is deen? Often it's translated as the word in English, religion. Religion. But it's so much more than religion. Actually, deen means the way, the way of something. How is, how is the way? Somebody asks you, how is your dean? They would be asking you, really, you know, what is your life all about? What do, you, what do you do in your life? And what we find out here now is that the only dean that Allah is going to accept is going to be the one that he's prescribed. And we've talked about this in previous programs when he said, in Adina in the Lahil Islam, that's in the Quran in chapter 3, verse 19. He's saying that for sure the way with Allah is submission and surrender to him in peace. Now, we've already talked about the word Islam, and we understand it means peaceful surrender to God uh, in uh, sincerity. And we've understood that Allah means the only one worthy to be worshipped. We've understood this to be the same God of Adam and Abraham, Moses, Jesus Christ, peace be upon them all, and Muhammad. And now we're going to work on this word deen and get a better understanding of what it is. Now, could there be such a thing as different ways to worship God. Yes, if he has prescribed them. For instance, one of the ways to worship God is to do so only on his terms. So that's a condition of worship. Another thing about worshiping him would be praying. But how do you pray? And then another thing to worship him would be how do we treat other people? And that would be an important thing. Another way to worship him would be giving charity. But how to give the charity? So this is now looking at this word deen to understand it more from his perspective, not ours. And to give you an example of that, uh, <laughs> I'm reminded of a story about a lady who was sitting there one day and her child came up to her and said, Mom, I love you. Mom, I really love you. She said, well, that's wonderful. How about going out in the kitchen and washing the dishes for me? Because my, uh, you know, my arthritis is bothering me right now. And, uh, you know, I have this uh, blood sugar problem and everything. And it's hard for me to go out in the kitchen and wash the dishes. So you really love me? Go wash the dishes. Oh, I don't want to do that. But I love you. I said, but if you really love me, go wash the dishes for me. No, Mom, I brought you some chocolate candies instead. She said, I can't eat that. With my sugar diabetes, if I eat this, it might kill me. I can't eat that. She said, I know, but I like it, so I'll eat it for you. And I love you. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? And here's another example. is The same child comes in the next day. Mom, I love you. I really love you. Okay. Well, would you go outside and mow the lawn for me and take care of the lawn, clean it up for me, mow it and take care of everything because my asthma is bothering me. You know, my sinuses and everything. I can't go outside today. Too much pollen in the air. So go out and mow the lawn. Nah, I don't want to do that. What? But you say you love me. Why don't you go mow the lawn? No, instead I brought you these flowers. Oh, I can't be around these flowers, the pollen. Oh, you know, this bothers me. I have asthma. Yeah, I know, but I like them, ah, and I'll smell them for you. Now, as this didn't make any sense at all, in the same way, if you said to Allah, look, Allah, I don't want the religion you want from me. I'll make up my own. 
I'll just do what I want to do and tell you to accept it from me. Is that going to work? And no. And we found this out in previous programs when Allah said in the Quran about this subject. Chapter 3, verse 85. Whoever desires a religion other than the one that Allah has prescribed for them, the deen of Allah, then he's never going to accept it from them. And hereafter they'll be with the losers. So to understand this deen is very important is the part of understanding the beauties of Islam. Allah has given us the complete and total deen. We know the deen of Allah. He said that he has completed his favor upon us by revealing to us a complete and total way of life. And that way of life is Islam, the submission and surrender to him in sincerity. And this is what we understand from those words, what I just said to you. Doing what he wants you to do his way. This means you could neither add to nor take away from this deen and still be successful. The only way to be successful is to learn and understand this deen and then apply it to the best of your ability. Now, what would happen, though, if somebody said, well, yeah, that's all well and good. We have the Quran. We have the teachings of Muhammad. They're very nice. It's good. You pray five times a day, and you give charity, and you fast Ramadan, and you have something called Hajj, pilgrimage. That's all well and good. But still... I think we need something else. I think, you know, maybe, or I want to do it another way. I think, you know, let us make some alterations, add some stuff to it. And what would happen? Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll find out what happens to people who add to or take away from the deen of Allah, right here on the beauties of Islam. Be right back after this break with more beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Europe's forgotten heritage. This is a sad reminder of the past history of the Muslims in the city. Nowadays, there are no Muslims anymore. These are the mosques that have remained. And it is really sad. Wait a second. This is Morocco. No, this is Tunisia, Algeria, North Africa, Egypt. No, this is all Europe, and this is all part of Spain. Islam spread first in Africa, and then from Africa, it came over to Europe, and then it did developing work in Europe. Now, we look the other way around nowadays. The compass was invented by the Muslims. Many important um, um, inventions came from the time of the Muslims on the Iberian Peninsula. Instead of people becoming less in battles, as we normally we, we know in battles, obviously, people die. But no, what was happening? The Spaniards recognized and realized the superiority of the Muslims and the treatment that the Muslims gave to the Christians and the Jews in Spain at that time, that they happily accepted Islam, many of them. And not over the fountain, as we've seen it before in other places in Greece. Now, it has some Arabic on top, as well as have some Arabic down where the tap used to be or where the water was coming out. Pack your bags, grab your passports, and join Dr. Steph Karis as he takes us through Europe and rediscovers Europe's forgotten heritage only on Hoda TV. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. We're back, and you've been watching. Beauties of Islam, we're back with more Beauties of Islam. We've been talking about the deen of Allah, the way to get to Allah by following the revelation that he sent to us, the Quran, and something like it. Now we want to talk about that a little bit. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the exact living representation of what Islam is supposed to be all about. What he did, how he did it, his life is the example for us, the Muslims. We've talked about this in detail in other programs, but I want to refer to that because we are talking about the Quran and the Sunnah. Those two things are very vital to understand what I'm going to explain next. 
There is a saying in Islam about innovations, those things which are newly invented matters. And while I will agree with you that as time progresses, we discover new things, and some things are very important and vital, actually, to our lives to incorporate these new things we discover. For instance, in my case, I enjoy something called a microwave oven. You know why? That's how I heat up my coffee. <laughs> We also enjoy traveling in airplanes and trains and automobiles. So these are innovations that are very necessary for us, and we enjoy them very much. I would hate to think that we'd still have to travel on camels and have to build a huge fire just to warm up some tea. At the same time, though, if we said we need to change our religion, incorporate things into it that didn't used to be there, or take things out of it, this would be a pretty amazing thing to consider, especially in lieu of the fact that Allah has revealed the verse that I just recited to you in the first portion of this program. When Allah said that he has conferred upon us his biggest favor by revealing a total deen for us, and this dean doesn't need anybody to change it because if they do, then they're not accepting the one that he sent. And he said he perfected it. So it's perfected on that day. This is clear. And nobody, nobody should add to or take away from this. Because if they do, what would happen? It wouldn't be the same dean anymore. Suppose somebody said to you, okay, look, I got an idea. Why don't we just pray three times a day? It'd be a lot easier for us. And why don't we just pray, uh, pray all together, you know, combine everything and make it real easy. Or somebody else might say, no, we don't pray enough. Let's make it so that people have to pray 10 times a day. Or once every hour, 24 hours a day, get up in the night and you have to wake up every hour on the hour and do that. That sounds very religious like maybe a monk or something. Then somebody else might say, well, what about this fasting all the time? Let's just do 15 days. Or somebody will say, let's fast two months out of the year. And somebody else could say, why should we go all the way to Mecca to make our pilgrimage? Why don't we just make one of the pilgrimages to Disneyland? That would be nice and a lot of fun for the kids too. Huh? Or, hey, you know what? There's a real religious guy over here, really, really nice guy. We really love him so much. He died, and there's his grave. Instead of going all the way to Mecca, we'll just go to this guy's grave and walk around there seven times instead of going to Mecca and call that, you know, a, a pilgrimage for us. What about that idea? Each and every one of these things may have an attraction for some people, and it may sound like it's a benefit. But remember what Allah said in the Quran. If anybody seeks after a deen other than the deen that he has revealed, he's not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, they're going to be with the losers. He said his deen is complete. So did you understand what this means? This means that it doesn't need you or I to add to or take away from it. Allah is not asking me to make up a religion. He's not asking me to make up a god. In fact, he's only asked me to do one thing, worship him on his terms. Listen carefully. He says that he's only created the jinn and human beings for the purpose to make ibadah, worship to him. Worship is for him. In fact, ibadah is a word in Arabic that's similar to the word slavery. To be a servant to him, serving him on his terms. Could you imagine a servant or a slave going up to the master and saying something like, Hey, you know what? Eh, you, you don't get your tea this morning. You're going to get it tonight. Take it or leave it. <laughs> How far would that go? And you and I both know that would be a big problem. In the same way, if anybody tries to make up a religion other than the one that Allah revealed, Allah is not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, they'll be with the losers. So that's the importance of knowing this beauty of Islam, the deen of Islam itself. In fact, the word deen is synonymous with the word Islam. And that is one of the beauties of Islam. Be sure to check our website, beautiesofislam.com. Till next time.
peace salam alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh islam is peace islam is ease islam is not danger or disease islam is love and prosperity islam is not hatred or adversity islam is neither maze nor grace islam is giving allah praise islam is keeping up the pace islam is for every race islam is peace islam is ease islam is not danger or disease islam is love and prosperity islam is not hatred or adversity islam is neither maze nor grace islam is giving allah 